Mark, let's talk about the, the so-called leading from the second chair where okay. someone is uh, doing youth ministry as an associate or as a youth minister, but not as head of staff. Um, leading from the second chair has its unique joys mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes openness of space, but also its unique challenges. Can you speak to that a little you bit? Bet. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, my, and that's been my whole, you know, my whole life in the church has, has I've never been a, a senior pastor or, or solo pastor. Yeah. I've always, I've always been, you know, I wouldn't say the youth, youth pastor is second chair. It's usually like sixth chair. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, that's much more authentic. You're right. Um, and uh, so to, you know, it's easy to feel powerless and minimized and, uh, voiceless mm. uh, in in that process, and I and I've actually seen, you know, folks shrink into and I, I've done mm. this. Folk, we, we shrink into this shell of well, you can't expect me to do faithful, healthy ministry in a toxic environment. Mm. You can't expect me to do that because um, yeah. this whole thing is toxic. Yeah, and and yeah. I tend to say well. What we can do is build a tiny island of viral health mm -hmm. that's the ministry we're responsible for. Mm -hmm. And so um, being able to, being able to uh, say, all right, in, you know, our, our volunteers, you know, there's maybe in, in the, the rest of the church, there's a real volunteer problem and people just, you know, there's just mythology, this narrative around nobody ever volunteers. Yep. And then, um, but you have these youth ministry volunteers that just just love it and stay year after year after year. Um, it's, you know, people are attracted to healthy stuff. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is you don't have any positional power, but people begin to come and say, okay, maybe we should, what are y'all doing? What, what, you know, see, this seems like it's kind of working here. Yeah. What? And so rather than focusing on trying to change this global system where we have almost zero power, right. we, can, we can work on creating, uh, you know, on the health of the system that we're in, the health of the ministry that we're in, which is hard enough, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, but I, I have found that if we create this island of viral health, people are drawn and curious um, about that. You know, the other thing is, um, I have I have sort of made it the number one item on a job description. So I had eight eight different pastors, five interims. Okay. Uh, yeah. During my 28 years yeah. in Nashville, and I made it my number one thing on my job description. It wasn't wasn't written there, but it was in my head. I keep problems off my boss's desk. Hmm. When my boss has to deal with problems because of me, like if something bubbles up, mm -hmm. then uh, my boss is having to do my job hmm. and, uh, and I'm making my boss's life difficult, which means when I need a little grace to try a new initiative or a new yeah. innovation, yeah. I'm not likely to get it. Yeah. Um, and you know, too many youth directors say, "Well, it's not my problem. If he wants people complain, they complain. They should come to me. They should come to me instead of talking to him." Mm. Um, um, but for a boss to know, they can always trust. Um, um, you know, I've had these weird sort of calls with my church, being part time and then as a volunteer. And, <laughs> uh, and you know, one of my one of my pastors, one of my bosses said. I never would have gotten into this deal with you because he inherited it. Yeah. Never would have gotten into it with you, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and part of what he says is, I just know I can trust you. Yeah. I just know that when somebody brings up a problem, yeah. you've got my back and I've got your back. Right. There's, but it's so easy for us to get oppositional with our boss. So just yeah. being able to, and some bosses make it pretty easy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> sort of forces it to yep. that into that quarter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the um, the the more we can focus on what we can control or mm -hmm. what at least we can influence, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, at our church, I was never going to influence the worship music in mm -hmm. the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It's not, 
you know. It's not your purview. It's, I'm not in that. Yep. Right? Um, and I can be unhappy about it, or I can talk negatively about it, or I can leave it alone, let somebody else yep. do it. And when they have the organ recital and they say to me, can you bring some kids? I can say, right. I sure will. And I offer them a little, <laughs> we'll go out to dinner afterwards and yeah. come on, yeah, let's sure. go. Sure. But a, a lot of times just being, um, helping our colleagues be successful yeah. is where we get the leverage yeah. to, to initiate change. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm speaking in the ideal with some, the benefit of a decade <laughs> you know, behind me. Uh, a lot of times there are toxic relationships with, mm -hmm. with, uh, on staff, uh, where, you know, we can do the best we can do and it's, our best is not enough mm -hmm. and we can't satisfy the, right. the supervisor. Yeah. Uh, you know, in that case, um, a good spiritual director is a good mm -hmm. decision mm -hmm. or a good therapist, mm -hmm. you know, and discerning whether you know, how long can I do this? Yeah, sure. Um, but a lot of times I do think we shoot ourselves in the foot when we do have more power because we get all off in this land of things we have no control over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I have seen when a youth ministry gets healthy, it often spills over then into children's ministry. It spills over into uh, adult ministry. And, yeah. you know, after a while, it begins to infect the congregation in a really yeah. beautiful way. Yeah, yeah.